I'm Dr. Larry Grouse, editor of Healthcare Video Logs and executive director of the International COPD Coalition. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, is a lethal disease. Worldwide, it's the third biggest killer, and with decreasing mortality due to heart attack and stroke, COPD, which is relentlessly increasing, may soon become the world's most lethal disease. This has already taken place in China, where industrial pollution, a high rate of smoking, second-hand smoke, and biomass fuel inhalation have combined to produce an epidemic of COPD in this country of 1.3 billion people. Experts predict that COPD deaths in China will double in 10 years. This epidemic will continue to increase and affect the entire world. It's not an epidemic of infectious disease, as we have seen so often before, but an epidemic of tobacco use and other forms of human pollution. To confront the dire scenario in China, three Chinese researchers have discovered some important facts about COPD that could improve its treatment. These researchers are Dr. Nanshan Zhang, the lung physician who identified and halted the SARS epidemic in 2003, and a leader of the global effort by the World Health Organization to combat the threat of H5N1 influenza. Dr. Chun Tzu Bai, a leader of the Asian Pacific Society of Respirology, and Dr. Zhu Chen, the health minister of China. COPD is not usually diagnosed until the patient has severe shortness of breath, increased lung secretions, and frequent episodes of bronchitis and pneumonia. I found that my difficulty in breathing has affected so many aspects of my life. By this time, more than half of the patient's lung function has been destroyed by COPD. The amount of air they can breathe continues to fall until survival is threatened. This normal spirogram shows the volume of air flowing over time during a forced breath. Two spirograms of COPD patients are superimposed underneath a normal tracing and show the impaired airflow. Medications can help patient symptoms, but no treatment stops the downward course of the disease when it has progressed this far. The Chinese researchers reasoned that if COPD could be diagnosed early, when only a small amount of the lung had been affected, then more could be done to halt the progression of the disease. Dr. Zhang organized screening of people at high risk of COPD, such as cigarette smokers, in their communities throughout China. The doctors screened using peak flow meters that measured decreases in breathing ability. Then Dr. Bai studied the patients with decreased breathing using low-dose computed tomography exams that could identify damage to the lungs caused by early COPD when only 10% of the lung had been affected. Here is a scan of a normal patient next to scans of patients with early, moderate, and severe COPD. This advance in technology allowed them to make the diagnosis of early COPD. Dr. Zhang found that the lungs of patients with early COPD behaved much differently than those diagnosed late. Medications were better able to increase their breathing and prevent infections. They made vigorous efforts to help the patients quit smoking and to avoid breathing toxic substances. This decreased further damage 